ओके कैन यू सी मी कैन आई स्टार्ट ओके ओके ओम दक्षिणा से समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यंता स्मरिया गुरु परंपरा श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा नाम आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत पादम शंकर लोक शंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य कृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम परिज्ञाश्रम श्री गुरशंकर परिज्ञाश्रम शंकर सद्गु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सद्गु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधीतमस्तु मा विषा वह ओम शांति 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 In the last session, I gave a very brief introduction to what our Vedas are, and what is Veda Purva, what is Veda Anta, what is the content of Veda Purva, Karma and Upasana are the contents of the Veda Purva, and the Veda Purva or Karma Kanda, as it is called, caters to the Dharma, Artha, Kama, Purusharthas of the individuals, and Vedanta, which means actually literally it means the terminal portion or the end portion of vedanta but then vedanta is also called jnana kanda vedanta is also called veda shiraha vedanta is also called as upanishads and i also describe that depending upon which vedas are describing this terminal portions of the vedas depending on that the upanishads various upanishads belong to the four vedas the terminal or the vedanta portion of the four vedas which are called as the upanishads and i gave you know a, a, a kind of detail about you know how many upanishads were there originally and how many are available now and then all 10 major upanishads for which shankaracharya has written commentaries we call them as major upanishads and different upanishads belonging to different vedas and i also said that kathopanishad belongs to the krishna yajurveda recension of the yajurveda and also we talked about the shanti patha what the meaning of shanti patha is i said also that every upanishad belonging to a particular veda has got the same shanti patha and krishna yajurveda which most important two upanishads which belong to krishna yajurveda are kathopanishad and taitariya upanishad kathopanishad belongs to the kathaka shaka and the taitariya upanishad belongs to the taitariya aranyaka and both of them have the same shanti patha that is sahana vavatu sahana bhunaktu we also saw the meaning of what the shanti patha is what is the purpose of the shanti patha before beginning the teaching and the learning session the guru and the shishya are all together chanting the shanti patha to protect themselves from any kind of obstacles and the three types of obstacles are the adhyatmika vignas which are nothing but those obstacles which are coming from within an individual for the teacher or for the shishya then adi bhautika obstacles the vignas which are coming from the surroundings one surroundings and the adhi daivika obstacles or vignas over which one has no control till here we saw in the last session this was mostly the general introduction 
to all the upanishads we give a similar general introduction one thing which i was not able to talk about in the last session due to the lack of time is what is the meaning of the word upanishad what is the meaning of the word upanishad is something which is very very important i said the jnana kandam or the vedanta is also called as upanishad and the texts which we are studying which contain this this contain this matter of brahma vidya are also called as upanishads the texts or the portions that we are studying in which the shruti deals with or vedanta deals with atma brahma aikyam jiva jiva you know jiva brahma aikyatvam brahma satyam jagan mitya jivo brahmaiva naparaha iti this teaching is there in all the upanishads which i also mentioned last time but what is the meaning of this word upanishad that is something which you have to understand in a very very simple manner if i have to describe it of course very very detailed descriptions are given for this meaning of the word upanishad but then we let us you know stick to the very basic primary meaning of what upanishad really means upanishad can be divided into three parts upa ni and shad upa means that which is the closest to me that which is the innermost that which is the nearest that which is me myself and what is that which is the nearest to me what is it that is closest to me what is it that is innermost to me it is nothing but myself the atma therefore upa means atma or myself ni means nischaya gnanam nischaya gnanam means absolute clear understanding of that atma by this knowledge this clear knowledge of what i am what this atma is ni nischaya gnanam upa that which is the closest that which is me myself the atma the knowledge of this atma the knowledge of myself the clear knowledge about what i am what does it do shad shad means that which destroys my samsara shad has the meaning of visharanam or gatihi or destruction of my samsara my bondage now let us not worry whether our bondage is real in the first place or not that's not the thing to be discussed here but there is no doubt that all of us are feeling bound there is no doubt that we are all feeling that we are bound by this samsara we feel that we are samsaris and then this bondage at present is real to me and as a mumukshu i want to get out of this bondage and therefore i surrender to the guru and shastra for this knowledge so what does this knowledge do this knowledge literally frees me from this bondage and what is the freedom from this bondage called as it is called as moksha therefore what it says is upa ni and shad means the knowledge of myself the knowledge of my swarupam the very clear understanding of who i am or atma that i am this atma not different from brahman i am this unlimited atma iti that which i understand about myself upa ni the very very clear knowledge which destroys the samsara for me so what is the content of the upanishads it is this clear knowledge this knowledge which talks which talks about myself this knowledge which tells me you are not what you think you are you are not the body mind sense complex anatma but you are the sakshi chaitanya atma iti this upanishad the content of this upanishad is this knowledge it is this knowledge which tells me that you are not what you think you are it removes all my confusions and wrong notions about myself and because of which my agnyanam is gone and the i the atma the consciousness i the atma reveals itself clearly clearly to me in its absolute glory therefore what is the purpose of the upanishad it is the knowledge that is there in this upanishad by which this samsara is destroyed for me and what is that knowledge me 
nishchaya jnanam about upa that which is the closest to me that which i am so the knowledge about myself this clarity of knowledge or clarity of perception about who i am which actually destroys my present perceived bondage for me this is the meaning real meaning of the word upanishad upanishad also means sitting at the feet of the guru and learning atma vidya upanishad is nothing but atma vidya upanishad is nothing but brahma vidya and as i said all the upanishads what does kata upanishad talk about brahma satyam jagan mithya jivo brahma eva naparah what does taitariya upanishad talk about same thing brahma satyam jagan mithya jivo brahma eva naparah what does taitariya upanishad talk about same thing every upanishad talks about the same thing as to what is the jiva swarupa what is the jagat swarupa what is ishvara swarupa and ultimately what is the absolute reality atma or brahman is the absolute reality and this atma is not different from that brahman which is the adhisthanam of this entire universe all these we have seen in vivek chudamani also therefore i am taking it for granted that these are familiar words these are the concepts which we have already seen in bhagavad gita these are the truths the vedantic truths which we have already seen in viveka chudamani also this is the meaning of the word upanishad and as i said kathopanishad belongs to the krishna yajurveda and we already chanted the shanti patha sahana vavatu and as i said in the last session itself the kathopanishad actually has two main chapters which are called as adhyayas prathama adhyaya and dvitiya adhyaya and the prathama adhyaya has got three sections which are called as vandis and the second adhyaya also has three sections called as the vandis so totally this upanishad has two adhyayas and six vandis total into about 120 verses now here we have to now start the upanishad and when we start the upanishad we always start the upanishad with our prostrations or namaskaras to the guru and the shishya as i said every upanishad is a dialogue between a guru and a shishya and in kathopanishad who is the guru bhagwan yama dharma raja or the god of death or the deity of death is the guru and who is the shishya is a vaidika an 8 year old boy who is the son of a vaidika is the shishya and therefore this is a uh, this is this is samvada it is a dialogue it is a samvada between the guru yama dharma raja and shishya nachiketas nachiketas he can be also called as nachiketa so nachiketas sakaranta shabda it is nachiketas so yama nachiketa samvada is this kathopanishad and the first vali the first vali actually like bhagavad gita the first vali of kathopanishad is talking about a story actually the whole upanishad revolves around a story but the story is most prominently brought about in the first one and a half vallis so the actual teaching of the upanishad starts only from the 18th verse of the second valli so the first valli and the second valli 17 verses are nothing but an introduction in the form of an akhyayika an akhyayika also means a, a story now what is the purpose of this story here for about one and a half vallis we have got a story what is the purpose the purpose of the story is bringing the shishya and the guru together on the same platform the guru yama dharma raya and the shishya nachiketas are brought together on the same platform and what else is the purpose of this akhyayika the story of nachiketa reaching yama and how nachiketas and yama come together after all lord yama is the god of death he is in his own world you know god of death is in his own world nachiketas is a human jiva who is on this earth a vaidika how is it that they met 
where did they meet what was the occasion how they came face with each other that is something which also has to be talked about and that is what is talked about in the very first valley in the form of a story so what is the purpose of the first valley and the first 17 verses of the second valley the purpose is number 1 bringing the guru and the shishya together number 1 number 2 talking about the glory of the teachings of upanishads or the glory of brahma vidya what is the glory of this brahma vidya that is what is going to be discussed the third thing is what are the characteristics of a guru what are the characteristics of a guru what does it require for a guru to be to teach atma vidya and lastly what are the qualifications what are the adhikaritvams that are required by a shishya these are the four things that are discussed in this story or akhyayika that is what the guru and the shishya are brought together the circumstances which bring these two together the glory of brahma vidya the importance of a teacher the importance of a teacher that is a teacher is necessary a guru is necessary because an upanishad is so cryptic the story itself you will find as i am describing that the story is also so cryptic that you have to have a teacher who uncodes or decodes the story also and tells you exactly the gaps that are there in the cryptic upanishadic mantras you know the verses of the upanishads are called as mantras and in these mantras there is so much of a cryptic explanation and sometimes there is so much of brevity in these mantras that if we just read these mantras it is not possible for us to us to understand what is actually being talked about and it requires a guru to decode what is told therefore the need for a guru importance of a guru then what are the characteristics or what are the you know the lakshanas that a guru should have to be teaching this brahma vidya and lastly what is the adhikaritvam that is necessary on the part of a shishya these are all the things that are talked about so let us go to the first verse first valli prathama adhyaya prathama valli and the very first verse and usually in the bhashya it is a tradition that in kathopanishad we always offer our namaskaras to the teacher yama and to the student also nachiketas because of whom we have learnt this particular knowledge so we start with this prayer om namo bhagavate vaivasvataya mrityave brahma vidyacharyaya nachiketase cha so our pranams om namo bhagavate vaivasvataya mrityave vaivasvata that is the sun of lord sun so and sun putra of lord sun vivaswan the sun vaivasvata yama is vaivasvata he is nothing but the sun of lord sun vaivasvata yam rityave he mrityu devata my namaskaras to you and nachiketa secha he nachiketa the deserving 8 year old boy a shishya of brahma vidya my namaskaras to you also so how does the first verse start here om always upanishads start with om om is an auspicious symbol and therefore any teaching which starts starts with this auspicious symbol om om ushanhavai vajashravasah ವೈದಿಕ್ರವಸಹ vajashravasaha means the name means a person who was well known for his deeds of sharing food vajaha means annam 
Vajaha means food. And Vajashravasaha means the one who was well known or who was famous for distributing food as Dhanam. So this is the Vaidika. He is a Brahmana, a Vaidika. Vaidika means one who follows the Karmakanda of the Vedas absolutely to the core. The one who does all his Nitya Karmas, Naimitika Karmas, depending upon his Varna and Ashrama is called as a Vaidika. Here, it is a Vaidika Brahmana by the name of Vaja Shravasaha. He wanted to do a Yaga. And the name of that Yaga is called as Vishwajit Yaga. See, all these things are not given here. This we know only by Bhashyam and by a Guru who knows what the meaning is. He says, Ushan Havai Vajashravasaha. This Vajashravasaha was actually desiring for Svargaloka. Ushan, desiring. Desiring for what? Svargaloka. He wanted to reach higher lokas like Svargaloka after death. And therefore, he was performing certain rituals or certain yajnas. And one of the most well-known yajnas is what is called as a Vishwajit Yajna. And what did he decide to do there? Sarva Veda Sam Dadao. This Vishwajit Yajna is one yajna where one is supposed to give away everything that one has. Whatever one has. Whether it is his house, whether it is his property, whether it is his, you know, his... Uh, uh, you know, animals, wealth, animal wealth that he's having cows. In those days, cows were the wealth. The animals were of wealth. His ashram, whatever he possesses, money or gold or food or whatever he possesses. Nothing has been mentioned about the family members. But then it is said that whatever objects a person owned, he's supposed to distribute everything that he has in this yaga or this yajna or this ritual, fire ritual called as Vishwajit Yajna, where he is supposed to give everything. Therefore, Sarva Vedasam Dadao. Sarva Vedasam. All that he had. Sarvam Vedasam. Sarva Vedasam. Everything that he had. All that he possessed. Vedasam means possessions. Whatever possessions he had, this Vajashravasaha is supposed to give away in the form of dana at the time of this yajna called as the Vishwajit yajna. And why did he do that? Sakamataya, not Nishkamataya, Sakamataya, to attain some material benefit out of it. Why do we do yagas and yajnas? Two reasons for which certain rituals are done. Any ritual, any puja, any upasana is done for two main reasons. One is for the material phalas, material benefits. One is for the spiritual phalas, for the spiritual growth, nishkama karma. So when you do something, desiring for material benefits out of a particular yaga or yajna, as suggested by the Veda Purva, that is called as a sakama karma, sakama karma. Whereas when you do the same karma, not with any kind of a material intention to attain to achieve anything material, but at the same time to have a spiritual upliftment and growth to gather spiritual punya. When any of these rituals is done with the intention of gathering spiritual punya, it is called as the Nishkama Karma or Nishkama Yaga. But here, our Vajasravasaha was not doing a nishkama yaga or karma. It was a sakama karma desiring for a higher loka after death. That is the meaning of ushan ha vai. That means what? Verily, our Vajasravas was desiring for a higher loka for a material benefit. Naturally, you no, know, there is there are three types of veshanas, means desires. Vittaishana, lokaishana. And putraishana, it is said. There are three types of desires. Every one of us has. We have a desire for vitta, for security, for money, for the surroundings around us to be conducive 
and happy that is called as vitaishana lokaishana means what we want to be in a proper surrounding we want to be in a proper loka even after death we want to reach higher lokas loka eshana that is what is called as lokaishana putreshana putra ishanam that means what i want to continue my santati i want to continue my lineage so this is the common the three common desires that means what all our desires come into these three vitaishana lokaishana putraishana these three are the groups three groups of desires in which most of our desires come in whatever may be hundreds of desires we may have all of our desires can be grouped into these three and our vajasravas had the desire for a higher loka swarga loka lokaishana for that reason sakama karma of vishwajit yaga was done in which sarva vedasam dadau he wanted to give away everything that he had he was in the midst of in the process of this yaga tasya hanachiketa nam putra asa he had a son by name nachiketa here our hero nachiketa has come nachiketas or nachiketa both can be used for him so nachiketa nam putra aha so asa asa means here it is you know long 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 ago so he had a son by name nachiketa and nachiketa was a very very intelligent child and he was all the time observing whatever was happening in the yaga shala and the proceedings of the yaga and yagna that were going on he was very very keenly observing and nachiketa wanted the good for his father nachiketa wanted his father to attain or achieve whatever goal he wanted to achieve out of this yaga and he had that deep desire that he should help his father to attain or achieve whatever he wants by this yaga and then in the next verse he says that what kind of nachiketa what kind of a boy was he and then what happened next that is the story which is which i'll have to describe in a little greater extent but the mantra is very very cryptic here also tam ha kumaragam santam dakshinasu niyamanasu shraddha vivesha so amanyata see how cryptic the upanishadic verses are if we study this by ourselves we may be experts in sanskrit language but if we study this by ourselves we will just not know what the upanishad is trying to convey in this particular verse so what does he say who was that nachiketa tagaham kumaragam santaha kumaram santaha so he was of the age of a boy kumara he was this nachiketa was a kumara kumara means what who is not yet an adolescent at the same time who is not a small child also so he might be a boy of about 8 or 9 years that is the age of the kumara up till about 5 or 6 years it is a child after that you know till you know the person you know becomes an adult you know at that adolescence till that adolescence this boy is called as a kumara kumara kumari so kumara he was a boy of about 8 or 9 years and he was very keenly observing whatever was happening and the time came when the dakshinas had to be distributed to all the ritviks ritviks means what ritviks are the priests who are officiating the yaga and it is said that there have to be 16 priests four from each veda four ritvi ritvik means a priest so four ritviks from each veda have to be there for any kind of these kind of yagas or yagnas and at the end of the yaga the yajamana is supposed to distribute dakshinas to these ritviks and then divide whatever he has because it's a vishwajit yagna among the deserving and needy and this nachiketa saw that that which was to be given to the ritviks he saw being taken to be and he saw that a lot of cows were being led 
from the cow shed to be given as dakshina to the ritviks even giving dakshina it is supposed to be which ritvik should get how much what kind of a dakshina should be got everything is mentioned in the veda purva the standing of the ritvik how much he knows what is his seniority depending on so many things how much dakshina should be given to which ritvik is also very very clearly mentioned and the cows were being taken to be given out as danam to this ritvik so dakshinasu niyamanasu niyamana means what they were being led who was being led who were being led the cows that were supposed to be given as dakshina dakshinasu niyamanasu then he saw those cows being led to be given as dakshina to the priest officiating priest and what happened to him shraddha vivesha shraddha avivesha when he saw the cows that were being led to be given as dakshina he was suddenly overcome by shraddha and concern for his father and he thought saha amanyata he thought what was his thought process what did he see there see that is not given even the mantra doesn't say even the cows were being led niyamanasu dakshinasu niyamanasu what is being led there are the cows to be given as dakshina and so when he saw those cows what was the thought process that went on he was overcome by shraddha shraddha means what he wanted the best for his father he knew that his father was doing a yagna which meant giving away everything and his father was very keen on getting the phalam of swarga phala he was very keen on getting and this boy was overcome with shraddha that with whatever intention my father has done this particular yagna he has to be successful in that but what he saw depressed him what he saw made him feel very very sad what did he see there in the third verse it says pito daka jagda trishna ha dugda doha nirindriya ha ananda namate loka ha tan sa gachati ta dadat now what did nachiketa see he saw that the cows that were being led to be given as dakshina to the priests officiating this yaga were old cows very old cows very weak cows as though they are going to die any moment or as though they are going to fall sick any moment and how does he describe these cows that were being led there pito daka first word pito daka those cows who had already drunk the last you know bit of water and they did not even have the strength to swallow any more water so they had drunk the last lot of water they had to drink pito daka jagda trishtrinaha jagda trinaha jagda trinaha this means what trinaha means you know the the the, the grass because they eat the grass or the hay and those who have already finished eating the lot last lot of grass jagda trinaha whatever has to be eaten has already been eaten that means what these cows do not have the strength any more even to chew and swallow the grass i think i made a mistake when i read jagda trinaha it is not jagda trishnaha jagda jagda trinaha it is pito daka jagda trinaha please make the correction there jagda trinaha jagda trinaha means those who had already eaten or digested the last lot of whatever grass or hay they were supposed to swallow that means they were so weak they were not even able to eat dugda doha they had already given out the last drop of milk also they were no longer able to give any more milk nirindriyaha they had lost the capacity for reproduction also they could not give birth to any calves also anymore such were the cows that nachiketa saw 
being led to be given as you know the dakshina to the ritviks to the priests and then he thought oh god this kind of a dakshina given dakshina is something which should be useful to the person whom you give when you make any when you do any dana a dana is something not because you don't want it you are not giving it away to somebody a dana is something which should be used which should be useful it should be in a useful condition because the person who is receiving the dana is actually fav making a doing a favor to you by receiving what you don't want sometimes in the name of dana we try to dispose of what we don't want fortunately there are takers for everything i don't want something there is somebody to take what i don't want but dana is not like that dana is not something that i want to get rid of what i don't want dana is something that i have to give something share what i have even i may need it even that i share whatever i have and whatever i give as dana should be useful to the person who has received it it must be of some help to the person who has used it it should not be a burden to that person it should not be that the person should wait to whom to transfer this whole thing it is like receiving our receiving some gifts you know sometimes some people come and give us gifts and we don't know what to do with them we don't like them we don't want them or we already have them and we are just waiting to pass it on to somebody that should not become the intention of giving dana here what is happening these kind of cows which are pito the cow they don't even have the strength to drink water anymore dagdha trinaha those who have already eaten their last bit they don't even have the strength to swallow chew and swallow grass or hay dukta doha they are incapable of giving any milk and incapable of you know procreating or bringing more cows they are not even capable of reproducing these kind of cows how are they going to help a person who receives them they are only going to be a burden to the person who receives them and nachiketa felt that whenever such a danam is given which is not of use to anybody or which is a burden to the other person the phalam of such a danam is that you don't go to the higher lokas you always go to the dukha lokas so he says that ananda namate lokaha tan sagachati ta dadat so he was overcome by shraddha shraddha avivesha we saw in the previous verse he was overcome with shraddha and a deep concern for his father oh my god my father has done such a big yaga and he is giving these kind of cows to the ritviks and this kind of a burden some dana that he is making or giving where will it lead to where it will it lead him to my father is not going to get the lokas which he wants the higher lokas he may even be going down to the lower lokas because of the wrong and you know inappropriate danam that he has given ananda namate lokaha he will reach those lokas where there is no ananda this is not ananda this is ananda nanda ananda ananda nanda means happiness ananda means extreme happiness ananda means dukha where there is no happiness so ananda namate lokaha my father will probably not reach where he wants but he'll reach the ananda lokaha tansa gachati he may go to such lokas by giving this kind of a danam to the ritviks now this question may come to us that why is vajashravasaha giving these kind of cows as dana nobody has forced him to do this yagna nobody has forced him to do this vishvajit yagna but he wants to do it because he wants to attain higher lokas but then why is he giving these kind of cows there are some people who think negatively that he wanted to get rid of all these things but that's not so it is not the intention of vajeshravasaha 
we have to understand that in vishwajit yaga a person has to give away everything that he has everything he cannot keep anything and unfortunately if vajra shravasaha had these kind of cows also along with his other healthy cows what will he do because he is supposed to give away everything that he has he is not supposed to keep anything with him and in his possession if a few of such cows are there they also need to be given away it is ultimately the punya or papa of the person who receives it we don't know who receives it but the intention of vajesh ravasaha is not to pass on these kind of cows as danam his intention is not to give an inappropriate danam no he has to share he has to distribute all that he has and the cattle wealth is also what he has and in the older times also the cattle who were like this who were weak and who were about to die were not thrown around or made to just wander around they were also looked after with the other cows so when vajesh shravasaha has to give whatever he has some of the cows that he had were also like this and they also had to be given away but nachiketa is not able to see that he only sees that oh god such cows that are being given as dakshina what will happen to my father because he is still a young child he has not really bothered or it is he is a child and he cannot think of all these things he only understands that such a danam is not a good thing for my father and i have to do something to prevent this kind of a danam being given at the same time nachiketa also has a feeling that i am his son i am the son of vajeshravasaha i also belong to him so if he has to give these kind of cows instead of these kind of cows why can't he give me away to somebody i can be of service to somebody i can help somebody whomever i go to i can serve that person so why can't i be given away instead of these cows as danam after all i also belong to my father and my father can give me also so what did he do when he saw this thing in the next verse in the fourth verse in the fourth mantra he says saho vacha pitaram tata kasmai maam dasyasi iti dvitiyam tritiyam tagam ho vacha mrityavetva dadami iti here also this verse is very cryptic again in between lines we have to read the story here also so he said saho vacha pitaram saha nachiketa pitaram uvacha he went to the father and he talked to the father and he asked what did he say tata means tata he father he tata he addressed he tata kasmai mam dasyasi who are you going to give me because he saw this he said he thought maybe i am a much better danam much better than these kind of useless cows that are going to be given to somebody i am a young boy full of energy and i can serve whomever my father gives me as dakshina therefore he tata he father kasmai mam dasyasi to whom will you give me he asked the first time he asked the father did not answer because he was in the yaga shala he was busy distributing the danam distributing whatever he has and therefore the first time the child asked he ignored the question he did not answer dvitiyam tritiyam tagam ho vacha second time nachiketa asked the same question tata kasmai mam dasyasi hey father who are you going to give me to second time he asked second time also the father thought this is a young child childish sometimes children go on repeating questions sometimes they want something they look on repeating i want i want i want they keep on asking the same question it is a very childish trait and however our nachiketa is hardly 8 or 9 year old kumara he is a kumara therefore the second time also he asked tata 
to whom are you going to give me then he ignored the second time also but tritiyam tagum ho vacha at third time nachiketa asked the same question he tata kasmai mam dasyasi see this whole thing is not explained in such detail dvitiyam tritiyam tagum ho vacha the third time when he asked the father lost his patience he became impatient actually in a yaga shala and at the time of the yaga a yajamana is not supposed to get angry a yajamana that is yajamana is the one who is conducting this yaga this is our vajashravasa nachiketa's father and not supposed to get impatient also but then because he goes and asks him three times who are you going to give me vajashravasa nachiketa's father became a little impatient and what did he say brithya vetva dadami i am going to send you to death here vajashravasa did not even think what he was saying out of anger he just said brithya ve dadami brithya ve tva dadami tvam you brithya ve to mrityu to the god of death i will give you and unfortunately our nachiketa took it very seriously and he did not feel bad about it oh good my father wants me to go to mrityu devata and serve him but at the same time he got a doubt he wondered mrityu devata is in in heaven or he is one of the devas one of the devatas he must be having enough number of help enough number of servants to take care of his work what am i going to do there how can i be of any use to mrityu devata maybe if i was given to somebody who did not have any enough help i could have served that person but my father wants me to go to mrityu devata or yama yama dharma raja what could be the purpose but from what i know all the devas they are all having lot of helpers and servants to serve them and help them in which case what will be my role what will i do there going there how will i serve yama and at the same time why did my father want me to go to yama is there any reason for that so he thinks goes to a corner and he thinks aloud by for himself as to what could be the reason why his father wants him to go and be a dakshina to yama dharma raja what could be the reason in the fifth verse the mental process the thought process of nachiketa as to why my father is sending me to yama he is not feeling bad he is not scared at all but he is wondering what could be the reason why i have been asked to go to yama dharma raja to the god of death he has enough help what am i going to do there what will be my role there he thinks about it and how he thinks about it in the fifth verse let us see that बहूना मेमी प्रथम बहूना मेमी मध्यम किं स्वीद्यम से कर्तव्य यन्मयाद्य करी सो ही थिंग्स फॉर हिमसेल्फ एम आर मै फादर्स शिष्यास एंड सन्स यू नो आई एम क्वाइट अ गुड स्टूडेंट आई एम अ गुड सन बहूना येमी प्रथम i am quite a good shishya i am quite a good son among many of my father shishyas aham prathamah i am quite a good shishya bahu na me mi madhyamah maybe i am not the topmost but i am at least of the middle order of shishyas somewhere in the middle bahu na among many of my father shishyas he was a vaidika i may be somewhere in the middle or among some of the shishyas i may be really a very good shishya and a very good son kim swid yamasya kartavyam what will i do going to yama what could be my purpose how could i serve yama dharma raya yan maya adhya karishyati in what way can i help yama in what way can i you know be of service to yama why is it that my my father is sending me there but then he said if my father is sending me to yama and he has talked this or said this in yagashala 
and anything that is spoken in yaga shala at the time of a yagna is considered to be the truth and it has to be followed that is one of the rules whatever is told in the yagna shala is supposed to be followed by the yajamana and therefore this san nachiketa prepares himself to go to yamaloka now we should not ask here how did nachiketa go to yamaloka what kind of transport did he use was it possible to travel from human loka to yamaloka like that this is a story so we have to just understand the story for the sake of seeing what the story is trying to tell us as i told in the beginning itself the first chapter first valley and the second half i mean the half of the second valley is talking about this akhyayika story the purpose of which is to bring the teacher yama and the student the shishya nachiketa on one stage one platform and also to talk about the actual preparedness of a shishya for this knowledge and also what is the glory of this gyanam so we should not be very critical about this story how it happened in those days whether people were going and traveling like this from one loka to other we don't know we have heard in bhagavad gita that in mahabharata sorry that arjuna went to devaloka to fight a war with his father indra with asuras now how did arjuna go did he go with the same body did he go in the same dress how did he, all these questions we cannot because it is mentioned in the upanishad in the mantra it is mentioned in mahabharata that is also mentioned so we have to accept it for whatever it is so we cannot ask how did he go normally when we go to mrityu loka this body is dead so did uh, you know nachiketa go as a ghost there did he go with this body only did nachiketa die to have to be to have to go to yama loka all these things we don't ask these questions the only thing is that nachiketa wanted to keep up his father's word though he wondered what could be my role in yama's house how could i be of any service to lord yama he thought of that but at the same time he did not want to go against the father's words and he wanted to carry on the words of the father which were spoken in the yaga shala so he got ready to leave for yamaloka and when he came got ready to take farewell of the father the father suddenly realized what mistake he had made and he said that i did not mean it son it was not it was only in anger that i said that out of impatience it was not meant to be but what did nachiketa say no father you have said this in yaga shala and you have made a commitment to send me to the lord of death yama and therefore you should not hesitate there is nothing wrong i am going to go there i am going to keep up your word definitely like what rama did he kept up his father's word his father gave a word to kaikeyi that he would fulfill two of her wishes or boons whenever she asked for it and when she asked for patabhisheka for bharata and asked rama to be sent to forest she asked she encashed these two boons at that time what did rama do rama said no i will do i will carry on your way. you have given a promise to somebody and it is my duty to carry on that promise as a son and that is what here nachiketa has also done in that long 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 ago he did not want his father's words to be false and therefore he said that don't worry you are take example of your predecessors the elders in your family who never spoke a lie and in the yaga shala whatever is spoken has to be the truth you cannot retract that particular withdraw that particular thing which you have said and look at the other people your contemporaries also that once they have given a word they are keeping it up therefore hey father don't feel bad about it i am going to go and serve yama according to your wish and i am going to 
keep up that word which you have given in yagna shala so in the sixth verse he is actually pacifying his father so what does he say anupashya yatha purve pratipashya tatha pare sasyamiva martya pachyate sasyamiva ajayate punah he says hey father human beings come and go sasyamiva martya pachyate when it rains lots of plants come up they just come out of the earth and then they it disappear like that human beings come and disappear martya sasyamiva pachyate martya means a human being a human jeeva any jeeva is born and dies associations and dissociations are going to be there but think of what your elders did anupashya yatha purve you have a rich tradition of all your ancestors and elders who have followed what they said pratipashya tatha pare look at what your current contemporaries are doing who are following what they have said and i will not let whatever you said in the yaga shala to become a false thing and ultimately every human being comes and disappears sasyamiva martya pachyate pachyate sasyamiva ajayate punah human jeevas come and go i may be with you today may not be there tomorrow associations dissociations are there we are all going to be there for some time disappear later but whatever word you have given to the lord of death not that lord of death asked for it he himself said i will send you to the lord of death so he has made a commitment i will send you to the lord of death so here the son an 8 year old boy is pacifying his father and telling him do not worry it's all right if i go i will go because you do not break your promise though he felt in the previous verse how will i be of any help to yama he did not mention that to the father he got ready he said please do not worry i am going to go there and then serve yama dharmaraja according to your wish and nachiketa goes to yama loka with the sixth verse we find that nachiketa has left for yama loka after pacifying his father here the vajashrava saha story ends in the sense that vajashrava has exited now he is no longer there now what happens to nachiketa after he reaches the mrityu loka after he reaches yama's palace or yama's place what happens that comes in the next few mantras which we will see in the next session om nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushakah avastha shambhavi mestu prasannostu guru sada sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah sarve bhadrani pashyantu मा कशि दुखम आपुया ओम शांति 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 ओम तत्सत